it's Steph with Tiny's Garden. Gardening here in Zone 5B in the Chicago suburbs. And Mary, Jesus, and Joseph are still with us here. I don't have all my Christmas decorations put away, but this is my seed starting room. I'm going to show you my seed starting supplies I'm using for soil blocking today. And so we're filming it right in here. I'm going to go through a bunch of items first and then I'm going to show you, sorry, sorry, and then I'm going to show you my grow light setup after. So I'm only doing for soil blocking supplies because if I did soil blocking and my cell tray supplies, we would be here for <laughs> all hour. So let's jump right in. The first thing, my favorite supply is this big green tub. Now, a lot of these items I have gotten on Amazon. If I did get them on Amazon, I'll put a link below. If you use that link, I do get a little commission off of that. And I thank you for supporting my channel. Or you can just go to Amazon and find it yourself. That works completely fine too. Other items I got from the local garden center. So I'll try and tell you where I purchased what. This is an Amazon purchase. And it is a huge tub that is so helpful for putting dirt in and mixing dirt up, getting ready to put into your soil box. So this is one of my favorite supplies. If anything else, I recommend this. Now, truth be told, this is my first year soil blocking. I'm starting today, actually. But in the years past, the couple years prior that I have done dirt mixing and everything, this has worked really well. I think it should work just as well for soil blocking. Next, I have these beautiful colored trays. I was searching and searching and I ran across these on Amazon and I can fit up to six small soil blocks on them. And they're really space conscious. They're not too big. They've got a little lip, not too big of a lip, so airflow can still really get around all the seedlings, so less chance of a fungus to grow or a disease to grow on them or algae grow. So I'm going to try these. I think they should work really well because it'll still hold some water and we'll see how they work. It comes in a beautiful variety of colors and I'm a color girl here for it. And you get eight of those in one order. I probably should have started with these. It's the soil blockers themselves. I have a small soil blocker here and a large soil blocker here. This one has 20 cells. This one has four. I'm going to use the majority of my soil blocking with this smaller one. I did go ahead and use my husband's help and made these a little more comfortable with putting a rubber coating on them. I'll link that video down below as well if you're interested. But these I bought through Lisa Mason Ziegler's Gardener's Workshop, and I'll put the link that I use below for that as well. I did the set, I believe. So you get this, and you also get some little tiny inserts to go into the big one as well. Calendar! Calendar, calendar, calendar. A calendar is really important for keeping track of what you're selling and when, and so that you can reference years priors to inform your seeds starting the following year. And so I've done that with my calendar from last year. I've already written down what I'm sowing in January. That video was just posted a couple days ago. I'll also post that below if you'd like to see that. But a calendar is very important for having out by your seed starting station for you to keep track as you start your seeds. Mashing potatoes, mashing potatoes. This is a potato masher. And I watched a video of Lisa Mason Ziegler. She really recommended using the potato masher to mix the dirt and water before making your soil blocker. And you can also discard the excess dirt after you have made your soil block. So I went ahead and bought one. I found this on Amazon as well. And <laughs> what do you know, it has a red end. So I'm gonna try it and see how it works. Who knew? A potato masher. A couple of ramekins. I know a lot of people will use tin cupcake foil little circles, and I don't have any of those, but what I do have are ramekins from my kitchen. And so I've got a bigger one and a smaller one. I usually put things like sweet peas in the bigger one. And the smaller one, I can put things like snapdragons. Those work really well for me. I use toothpicks 
to pick out the seed and actually put it in to the cell, and so I'll be doing that again. I don't have any toothpicks right now, but take note, you probably want some toothpicks. Plastic wrap. This I got from Costco. It was the smaller size out of the two options. There was a gigantic one, and then there was a little smaller one. This one has 750 square feet, which I think is gonna be more than enough. So after I have my tray and my soil blocks on them, then I'm going to cover them up with this plastic wrap to create a humidity dome. And then when I'm done and my seeds have started sprouting a little bit, I can take that humidity dome off and reuse that plastic if I would like or grab a new sheet. So, got a large supply of plastic wrap from Costco. Marking the actual trays of my soil wax. So, let me get my tray to show you. Here's my tray. My soil box would be on here. I'm gonna take painter's tape because, again, Lisa Mason Ziegler, can you tell I've been watching a lot of her videos, recommends using painter's tape instead of, uh, what's the other tape? Masking tape, because masking tape can tend to rub off. So painter's tape, put it on the bottom and write down which seeds are that soil block. So if I do three different types of seeds on one tray, I'll do three different painter's tape labels with a garden marker. Garden marker is better than a Sharpie. It does not rub off with water and dirt, which you're undoubtedly going to get on your stuff. Now, the only thing about these trays is they're a little shallow, but I'm thinking I can still put the tape on the outside here and still see what I'm growing just fine. So stay tuned if these trays work out or if I need to get one with a little bigger lip, but I really like these so far. Anyways, that's how you're going to use your painter's tape, is for labeling with a, oh, with a garden marker. A temperature gauge. So a temperature gauge I got on Amazon. I have purchased three of them because I put them on all of my grow lights. I have three sets of grow lights. And then when I move outside to the greenhouse, I also put one in the greenhouse. Let me come up close so you can see what this shows you. We have a humidity reading, a percentage here, and then we have the temperature down here. That's important because some seeds like to grow on at certain temperatures. My upstairs temperature in my house is different than my downstairs temperature in my basement. And I've got some grow lights downstairs and one upstairs. So I like to know where the temperature difference is so certain seeds can go in certain grow lights. It also has a magnet on the back so that you can easily, if you have a metal grow light, attach it to that grow light or the bottom of a grow light station, you can put it right there on the shelf. Any type of needle nose pliers. I've used, I believe it was the Dram brand before, love those. I got these recently from Amazon. These are some ARS snips, really nice. This is great for when you go in and you're th thinning. When you go in and you're thinning seedlings, so that you just have one left in each cell, the needle nose is really nice to get in there and snip any extras out. Then I've got some sticky stickers here. Now these are for fungus gnats. I had a little bit of a fungus gnat problem last year with my cell trays. I stuck these in there, and you'll see a whole bunch of little gnats get caught on them. So they do a good job. I'm going to use the same thing with the soil blocking, put some strips or some stickers on the side and catch any gnats that come. I know that Lisa Mason Ziegler puts something in her soil or it's like, um, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something to help keep fungus gnats out or lessen the chance of getting fungus gnats. So if you use that, let me know. I haven't purchased that yet, but... I know a lot of you have been soil blocking for a while. So if you know what that is and you think that that's worth it, let me know. I didn't jump on it yet, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, our next round of supplies. The first one is what dirt I'm using. For my soil blocking, I'm using the Fort V potting mix that is from Vermont Compost Company. I've got two of these 20 quart bags. Yeah, 20 quart bags. 
and I'm going to start soil bucking with this. I've heard really good things. I have also heard, thank you, Sam Dropper, telling me about this, that she sees her Vermont compost because she's found that there can be some little sticks and things, and she has heard from Lisa Mason Ziegler that that's a good idea, so I believe you can purchase that off of the Gardener's Workshop as well. I don't have that. I'm going to give it a trial run without and see how it works, but... That I thought was a great tip. So thank you, Sandra. Then we have heating mats. Some seeds need to be put on heat. So I've got a small one here. I purchased both of these from Amazon. Let's see the size of this. 10 inches by 20.75 inches. And then we have a big guy. And this one is 48 by 20.75. So needless to say, you can fit a lot on this big boy if you don't need that much. This little one works just is great. And then we've got one of these things called a flexible joint knife, a four inch one. I've seen uh, someone use this before when they're mixing their soil for the soil block and to get the bottom of the soil block clear like I'm using the potato masher for. So I'm gonna try both of them, see which one I want or like best. And if I lose one, <laughs> I still got the other one. Then I have my water sprayers. These are both by Crescent Garden. I got these at my local garden center. They are the best. They can change the flow of water. They're easy to pull the trigger. Your hand doesn't get tired. This is a smaller one. This is a larger one. I don't think they sell these on Amazon, but check your local garden centers. Your nice local garden centers. They probably will have them. If they don't, you can always ask about them, but these are an exceptional tool. This one is bigger and is also a little different trigger thumb, so you can hold more water and spray a whole tray, which is fantastic. Now, I understand a lot of times with soil blocking, you are going to just pour the water into the tray, so you're watering those soil blocks from underneath. I understand that, but I'm probably going to use these at some point anyways, and they're just such a great tool. Aside from that big green tub, these are my favorite things for seed starting, so I thought I would at least mention them, even if I don't use them that much for soil blocking. But let me know if you spray your soil blocks ever. That's an interesting point. All you veterans out there, let me know. Vermiculite. I always have vermiculite on hand during seed starting season because this helps fight algae and a lot of seed packets will tell you to put some vermiculite on top of your seedlings after they've been sown. Lysianthus, you're definitely going to do that. So I've got a bag of vermiculite. Now I'm not using this right when I start the seeds, but as the season goes on, I will be using Neptune's Harvest, which is an organic fish emulsion fertilizer. Y'all, this smell is out of this world terrible. I'm giving you a warning right now, but it does a really great job at fertilizing plants. So as long as the plant or seed wants the fertilizer, this is a great option to give them. Then we have a timer for your grow lights. I, oh boy, I did not use one of these for the longest time. And I would go to bed at 9 o'clock after I put my son down. And then I'd remember, oh, I got to get my grow lights, turn them off. So then I'd get up and then go turn every single grow light off. You don't have to do that if you have a timer. I finally jumped on board about halfway through last year. I got this from Amazon. I'll link it below. Honestly, my husband set it up. But it is a lifesaver. It automatically turns your lights on and off based on the amount of time you want them to be lit, it's worth it. It's worth it. Last thing here, a Baron's trash can. I got this to put my dirt in. As I said, I do a lot of my seeds starting here in my kitchenette, and I don't want it to get too messy, obviously. So I am going to put my Fort V compost in here, load it up, put a scoop in there, so it can stay a little more contained and it'll go right into the green big tub to be mixed. But this I thought was a great size. It is a 10 gallon trash can that I got from the Home Depot and it's pretty cute. I don't mind having this in my kitchenette next to my grow light. 
I'm all about the farmhouse look. We'll take this ugly label off and voila, we're great. Okay, that's it for the supplies. Now let's take a look at the grow lights just so you get a chance to see where I'm actually gonna be growing these on and what systems I use. This is the bamboo grow light system from Gardner Supply. I got this my first year and it has been a workhorse. It is a nicer aesthetic look, which is why I put it upstairs in my kitchenette. And I just painted this navy blue and I feel like it's a really pretty combo. Either way, woo! She's breaking things again. Either way, it was easy to set up, easy to build, and it has done a great job with all the seedlings that I put in here. These trays are removable, so I actually have the top one over there, but it's a great system. It catches any water that comes out of the tray. It's been very nice. How to turn it on, flip the switch, and the light turns on. Excellent lights, LED. I've never had a problem. You don't have to raise or lower the lights, and there's lights on each tier, three tiers total. So, great system. It is on the more expensive side, because you're getting all of this with it, but it was an investment for me and I have used it all the time for seeds starting in the previous years. Another nice thing about this one is if you wanted to decorate it during the off season and just have it as a part of your house decoration, you could. I tend to just keep my seed stuff here and don't worry about it, but I can see people who are a little more decorative than I am really decorate this to the nines and make it a nice part of your room, whichever room you put it in. Now we're in the basement. This is where my two other glow light stations are. These I made myself. This one right here is the Big Daddy, red again. This is from the Home Depot. We bought it last year, as well as the shop lights that are in here. If I can find the ones that I used, I will link that down below. It was a one-stop shop. We got this and the shop lights and the chain and the, uh, what did we use to, yes, and the S hooks to actually connect the chain to. These you manually have to raise and lower, but it gets the job done. I have two per shelf. I found out that one per shelf last year was not enough to cover the whole shelf, but you can see there is a ton of space which is great because last year I started over a thousand seedlings. This year I expect <laughs> maybe even more. So it has plenty of room to house all of them. I also have a timer, the same one I use upstairs for these. It is very nice. I plug them in in a way in which I plug it into the timer's outlet and when I turn it on with the switch, voila, they all light up together so I don't have to go shelf by shelf also really helpful. There's the big daddy. Imagine this all filled up, which is gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Now let's check out the first one I ever made, which I still use right behind you. Full disclosure, this is real life. It's my basement. There's a bunch of storage over here that is just everywhere. So real life. Here she is, the one I made my first year with all my outdoor couch cushions on it. This one I don't recommend getting the size. All of this is from Home Depot. It absolutely still works, so I do use it. Any excess that I have, I do put the trays here and it still works just fine. It's on a timer as well. The depth of it is just not as big as the bamboo one or the red one I have on the other side of the basement here, but it absolutely works. It gets the job done. So that is my setup. And that completes this video, everybody. Thank you for coming on that ride with me. Please comment below and let me know what I'm missing. If there's anything you're using for soil box seed starting, please comment below and fill me in. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to follow along with all things garden. And welcome to everyone who's new here. Please let me know where you're from, what zone you're gardening in. I would love to hear, and we'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now from me, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Happy planting, y'all. Bye. I know you're here too, Axel. Goodbye from Axel too.